All right, we'll get started. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to this last day of our micro-credential forum. My name is Tommy Lam, and I am the micro-credential program lead here at eCampus Ontario. I'm joining you from my home in North York, Ontario, on the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Chippewa, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat people. As a settler of Vietnamese Chinese descent, I want to acknowledge my immense privilege and express my deep gratitude to be able to live, work, and learn on this unceded traditional territory. It has really been a true pleasure to be able to build community around the important topics of the future of education, micro-credentials, and pathways for jobs. This has really been a landmark event for eCampus Ontario to the extent that it's our first micro-credential forum in this hybrid format with some in-person offerings as well as online sessions. It's the first forum to intentionally underscore the important connections between micro-credentials and the labor market. In the last two days, we've seen thought leaders come together to meaningfully unpack what it can look like for us as a community to face the future of micro-credentials and education effectively. We've seen successful examples of industry, institution, and government collaborations. We learned about some stunning statistics that shed light on skills gaps and the current labor market. And we heard about indigenous community-based micro-credential projects. And the best part of all of that is that it's not over yet. Today, in this final day of the forum, we will continue together on this pathway of learning more about the implications of academic and industry partnerships. We'll hear about some of the opportunities and the challenges of things like building micro-credential credit pathways, as well as profile other innovative micro-credential projects at uh, publicly funded institutions. At this point, before we jump right into our first presentation, I wanna pass it over to Robert Luke, eCampus Ontario CEO to introduce the Deputy Minister for some opening remarks. Thank you very much, Tommy, and thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm really pleased to be here on day three of the eCampus Ontario Microcredentials Forum. We've had, as Tommy said, we've had two really great, excellent days of sessions, and today promises more great discussions, including what I know uh, will be a very interesting presentation from uh, my former colleague at OCAD University, uh, Evan Tapper, who's the Director of Continuing Education there. He's a leader in the micro-credentials and continuing education space, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Uh, but first, I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker for opening remarks on this final day of the forum, broadcasting live from the collective studios of eCampus Ontario. Shannon Fuller, Deputy Minister of Colleges and Universities and Deputy Minister of Strategic Planning, became Deputy Minister of Colleges and Universities in December 2022. Prior to taking on this role, Shannon was the Deputy Minister of Policy and Delivery at Cabinet Office, where she worked with all ministries and the Premier's Office to develop and deliver the government's policy and legislative agenda. Shannon was previously the Assistant Deputy Minister for Economic, Environmental Justice and Intergovernmental Policy in Cabinet Office. And prior to joining Cabinet Office, Shannon worked at the Ministry of Education in various roles, She's been in the OPS for over 20 years and held positions at the Ministry of Intergovernmental Affairs, Cabinet Office Communications, and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, Deputy Fuller holds a Master's in Public Administration from the University of Victoria and a Specialized Honours Degree in Public Policy Administration from York University. Now, I've had the great pleasure of, of meeting the Deputy on a couple of occasions and really have enjoyed our conversations. She brings an incredible depth of knowledge of the entire educational system and indeed the entire uh, social and economic context in which we live and work. And she brings not only acumen and insight to this MCU portfolio, but also a keen interest in learning. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Deputy Minister Shannon Fuller. Deputy, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Robert, for that uh, incredibly kind and uh, far too lengthy introduction. I'm really excited to be here with you all this morning as you kick off day three of what I understand is the seventh annual uh, Micro Credentials Forum. Real honor to be here with you. 
the thought leaders, the industry professionals, and the decision makers in, in micro-credentials from right across the country. As we all know, micro-credentials are a critical part of how we're building the skilled and educated workforce we need for the jobs today and tomorrow. And as Robert outlined, this has been a really key area of focus for me since I joined the ministry a few months ago. I think that your theme this year, Pathways for Jobs, is really fitting. And, and when I was thinking about our conversation today, I was really reflecting on you know, how every one of our paths is different and the real focus on needing to provide options for learners to develop their skills and experience in flexible ways. And I know that that's what the micro-credential strategy is, is designed to do. I've been really uh, inspired and, and impressed by the great progress that has been made on the key components of the strategy. And I know Minister Dunlop touched uh, on this in her remarks yesterday as well. But I've been really learning uh, about the great initiatives like the Challenge Fund, the online portal, uh, which I was blown away to hear now makes it easier for people to find and enroll in approximately 1800 micro-credentials. I know really critical work underway on the virtual skills passport. And of course, uh, was uh, really, really inspired by the expansion of the Ontario Assistance Program to include micro-credentials. Together, I know these actions are making it easier for learners to access micro-credentials and also to find those pathways to jobs. I believe we all share a commitment to supporting learners from all walks of life and at all stages of their careers. We're all continuing to learn. And we also know that for many people, post-secondary education doesn't stop at the completion of a single degree or diploma. Many of us are, are evidence of that. We also know that lifelong learners are really busy people. They've got family requirements, they've got work requirements, and they're pulled in a whole lot of different directions. And we need to be able to support them in hitting the ground running to make immediate impact with employers and to pursue new job opportunities when the time is right for them. Through this important work, we're opening the window of opportunity for those who are looking to develop new skills quickly. By offering micro-credentials alongside degrees, diplomas, and certificates, we're really empowering learners with options. And I think that empowerment element is so critically important to the work that we are doing. We also know that we're seeing a lot of micro-credentials being offered online, and that fits really nicely with our increasingly digital society. Across our post-secondary institutions, we're seeing how digital learning is really augmenting the world-class and in-person education that our institutions offer, as well as the opportunities it presents to reach students who might not otherwise have access to post-secondary education. And I've had the opportunity over the course of the last few weeks to meet with a number of students experiencing exactly this and the opportunities for them and the doors that have been opened in recent years um, are, are, are just it's something that could not have been imagined even five, five years ago. We're really supporting parents who can't find time to be on campus. We're looking to support workers to take a micro-credential course online to improve their skills and re-enter the workforce. And critically important, and I know an area that you've been talking a lot about over the last couple of days, supporting our Francophone, Indigenous, rural, and remote learners across Ontario. We've learned a lot over the course of the last few years, and as we see increasing demand for hybrid teaching and learning, just like the offering today for this forum, learners really do benefit from that combination of digital and in-person learning. We know that that's working for many people. Providing options for people to learn when and where they want and need really helps increase participation in education and is a key cornerstone of Ontario's virtual learning strategy. Working in tandem with the micro-credential strategy, the government's $70 million investment in the strategy is building more equitable access to learning and training opportunities. And again, I know a shared focus for us all is that opportunity for all learners to build their skills and expand their horizons. Events like today are so important in bringing us together to share new ideas, to learn more about the opportunities that are available and to continue to work together to shape the future of post-secondary education. I'm really honored to be here. I look forward to working with you as we continue our thinking, our dreaming and our building of the future of micro-credentials. A big thank you to eCampus Ontario for organizing and bringing us all together and for including me this morning. Thank you so much and really look forward to enjoying the event today.
Thank you so much to you, Deputy Minister Shannon Fuller, for making the time to be here to help us set the tone for this day three of our micro-credential forum. In honoring our very fast-paced uh, agenda, uh, now I want to transition right to our first presentation of the day uh, on partnering to meet the needs of the labor market, opportunities and challenges in academic and industry micro-credential collaborations. This presentation will be delivered by Evan Tapper, and I have the pleasure of introducing Evan Tapper. Evan received a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the School of Art, University of Manitoba, and a Master's of Fine Art from the School of Art, Carnegie Mellon University. His artwork has been exhibited throughout Canada and around the world. He is the director of the School of Continuing Studies at OCAD University and a lecturer in studio art, arts, culture, and media at the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. Uh, I will be assisting with the Q&A portion here uh, for this session, so please do send us your, your question in the Q&A box. Uh, that's the box underneath this pre the presentation screen that you're watching, and you can also use the feed loop chat to engage with um, each other, and that should be on the right-hand side. So uh, I will now pass it over to you, Evan, to uh, get started with your presentation. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, oops. Great. Uh, thanks, Tommy. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, it was a fantastic day yesterday, and um, it's uh, I've been really excited. eCampus Ontario has been such a fantastic supporter of micro credentials at OCAD University. Um, so. When I was thinking about this talk, you know, uh, OCAD University is a smaller focused university uh, focused on art and design. It is the largest art and design university in the country, but it is a specialized university and working with industry is a bit different. We can't offer uh, giant programs like nursing and uh, those kind of things. And we're more focused on um, creative professionals. And also when I think about uh, job opportunities, there's many different ways that that turns out. For creative professionals, it's not necessarily a linear path. And uh, we do support a lot of uh, people working in the gig economy and looking at contract work. So the two things I want to talk about are one of our uh, very popular micro-credentials on product design and development, and another one on working in uh, film and TV. So if we just uh, um, move ahead, you know, this is, of course, everyone recognizes this. This is from the eCampus Ontario micro-credential uh, framework that I use all the time and I was really excited to be part of uh, thinking about. Um, and when we're thinking about partner endorsement on the micro-credential, you know, um, it's the competency for in-demand, uh, that the skill is in demand by industry and the establishment of an assessment is reflected of job performance in that industry. So those are really the, the key endorsements of the, the partner and how we work with the partner uh, is different from institution to institution. And there's different challenges that uh, we all face as, um, in, in, uh, as uh, academic institutions. So one of the things when we think about working with a partner and for many of you, this will be a review for some of you. I think uh, sharing my experience might be helpful if you're thinking about how do we approach industry? Because, you know, as a smaller university, people want to work with us, but sometimes it takes a little bit of convincing and a little bit of working through that relationship. So what industry can bring uh, with the academic partnership? Of course, subject matter expertise and instructor referrals. So you know, the industry leaders uh, can say, these are the people you have to work with. They are the leaders in this industry. They are connected to um, exactly the skills that the uh, students need to have to succeed in this area. They can help with curriculum development and oversight. The companies can help with user testing. Um, and in many cases, the instructor can come from that partner uh, and they can offer help with course delivery and be the instructor and they can also do skills assessment um, and that can uh, range in kind of different forms depending on uh, what's needed. So the other thing that's really great about working with an industry partner is uh, there's brand um, 
alignment. Uh, there's different kinds of marketing opportunities, different kind of outreach. It's quite exciting to see, uh, you know, all the different ways that um, students can access uh, a micro credential, understand it. Sometimes they come from the company. Sometimes they come from the university. So it's a really interesting partnership. And also, as universities, uh, the, there always is a um, relationship, usually with the partner and the university. There's a long history of uh, working with these partners before I came along. Uh, and, and also, it can expand existing relationships. So, you know, in our case, there was a relationship with uh, the partner working with our Center for Emerging Artists and Designers, working with some of our design faculty in industrial design and product design, and also um, working with um, integrated media, film production, but there also was potential for more relationships with advancement within the university, sponsorship, all sorts of things. So um, it's also a way partnering to expand that relationship across the different companies. Um, there's also opportunities for internal training where, you know, often uh, continuing studies are looking at, you know, adult learners in, and, but then within the company, there's also upskilling that's always needed. So that's a, a great opportunity and pathway to employment, sometimes direct or indirect. Uh, and I can talk about that with those examples and endorsement for funder. And there's good reasons why that is uh, important, but many of the development grants require industry partners. So we find as in, in continuing studies, when we're looking at developing our programs, securing the right partner to work with and managing that relationship becomes essential for the funding to be secured and also for the uh, project to be built and developed. So there are challenges uh, working with different partners. And uh, these are coming from my experience generally, the objectives uh, can be different. So we all want people to learn and gain skills, but how they do that and who those people are can be different. So, you know, a company can be very focused on um, one of their projects in their as they're working in business very specifically, where the university can be more looking at training for adult learners beyond that initial cycle, um, developing courses that evolve and change. So there can be different ways that we work together. Priorities can shift. Um, you know, we launched our Empathy and Social Insight for Mike for Human Centered Design, and then COVID hit. <laughs> so the company was shifted completely into what their priorities were for that time being. And also the universities can shift priorities. You know, uh, as a director of continuing studies, we're running many different kinds of programs all at once. And some uh, need more attention than others at different times. So we have to manage those changing priorities together. Timelines also are completely different. So um, some objectives and budgets are tied to fiscal. That can look different in, industry and with universities, um, system of governance and oversight also can be a challenge. So in our case at OCAD University, we have all our micro-credentials approved uh, through a committee, a Senate committee, subcommittee, and then Senate executive. For me, that's really important to um, have all of our uh, credentials and all of our curriculum uh, endorsed by the university and understood by the university. Um, across the different departments. So, and that can take a while so that we can't move as quickly as um, we'd like to in some ways, but we really do need the consensus of the university. And that is, has been a strength of ours. Um, and I think different universities have different approaches to that. The other thing is there can be many different challenges. We offer many different micro-credentials and there's been times when our MOA is stuck in a legal department uh, at, at a company for different reasons, you know, so there can be delays on that side. So we've got to sort of work together with completely different timelines sometimes. We all have the same goals, but uh, managing that relationship can be challenging and something to think about. Capacity of what we can, where we can devote our time and energy, uh, both industry and academic institutions changes, leadership changes. So. Um, oftentimes, a partnership can be instigated by uh, one of the leaders at a company that really sees the value of this partnership. That leader can leave, and then we're left with, you know, building that up and building that relationship again. Um, so it has to go beyond the individual at both institutions. It has to be 
what makes sense between the two institutions. Staff members can change. Um, we've had staff turnover that's happened, you know, across the sectors. Um, and I think that's something to kind of think about. You know, I don't often see what's happening on the on the partner side, what they're dealing with and the issues they're dealing with. And they don't see what we're dealing with as well. So it's all, all about communication and um, changing uh, flexibility of how we work together sometimes. So I'm really excited to talk about our uh, first micro-credential that we ever offered. Uh, and it's called Empathy and Social Insight for Human-Centered Design. And it is a, a product design uh, research um, uh, micro-credential, six-week asynchronous course. And really the focus is for people to understand who they're designing for and what the problem is that they're solving with the product. So it's the first stage of product development. And it's been really successful. Um, it, we were really fortunate to be working with Mayant. Uh, and uh, Mayant is a textile computing company. They do incredible wearable media, really innovative products. And they provide the oversight and, um, and the, the, uh, the subject matter expertise as we develop this uh, micro-credential. And I'll just go into how that was uh, created. So we were really very fortunate to be one of the pilot uh, um, schools for the eCampus e Ontario micro-credential pilot way back when, that first time. Uh, and it was, it changed everything. So that, and, and for then at that time, micro-credentials were quite new, at least for OCAD. And uh, we didn't have a framework, we had to develop that. So we had a development team, a subject matter expert from Myant. Myant provided user testing. We hired a subject matter expert uh, from our faculty of design, um, a sessional instructor that was working in the faculty of design as a subject matter expert. Uh, we had a project manager, we had an instructional designer from our team, and we had a graphic designer from our team. And, uh, you know, this was, um, a really interesting opportunity and it changed everything. We had to, this is our, you can see our, that's our digital badge. We had to meet with marketing communications and create a whole system of design for our badges that aligned with uh, the university's um, brand and uh, through marketing communication. Uh, we had to work with Senate, with the vice president's office. It was a really exciting thing to do. And, um, also, uh, there was some shifts that happened. Uh, you can see here, uh, just going into the micro-credential, there's, this is our, it's a six week module. So you can see module three, some of the examples of, of what the students got into. Um, and it was, uh, you know, you can see we're looking at decolonizing design. Uh, there's a lect, the students watch the lectures. You can see here's um, one of our instructors, um, Nadine, she's showing uh, one of the slides on research design research. So, you know, and then they produce a product, they produce um, uh, um, what's it called? A, a, a design book. Uh, I can't remember a process book. Yeah. So as part of this as what they come out with. But one of the things that happened, as I mentioned, COVID hit. Um, and one of the really interesting things that happened that we couldn't control is we had a subject matter expert from Maya working with us and she was amazing you know she and she was working with the team at Maya and user testing back and forth and um at a certain point after after we ran the micro credential once uh the next year she left the company so that's a question that can happen with uh universities we're working with someone in the company and they're gone they are the expert they have the IP that wasn't really an issue, but that could be. Um, and so I met with the vice president of mine. And I said, you know, we still want to work with this instructor. She's amazing. And the instructor had a really good relationship with Maya. So she was able to continue that relationship. And the vice president said, yes, absolutely. We trust this person. We still endorse this micro credential. We'll still be able to continue to provide ac academic oversight, curriculum oversight. And um, this will work well, but that is the situation that you know universities can find themselves in when the people they've uh, partnered with are no longer with the company, and things change and relationships change. So, in a really good way, that was you know that all worked out, but it can be a challenge. Um, and then uh, what it changed over the years, the curriculum was updated. As I said, the instructor changed, and there were shifts, of course, in our relationship. Um, um, and also, as the micro-credential uh, sort of be took on more of a life of its own, 
uh, originally it was conceived that we would be training more of the team at Mayant. In the end, it became more of design for creative entrepreneurs to develop their own products. So it was related to what Mayant was doing, but they were more interested, what the micro credential ended up working more for um, entrepreneurs and uh, creative professionals developing new products. So, and we expanded this series of human centered design. Um, once we had the research, the empathy and social insight for research, we were able to launch ideation and prototyping Again, thankfully, with the support of uh, eCampus Ontario and some of the development funds. And uh, so then now that you're researching, you're, you're asking the questions, what are you, who are you designing for? What is the problem? Then you now have the next micro-credential to uh, ideation and prototyping to develop that product. And the final um, cycle, end of the cycle is user testing and launch, which is uh, really exciting. So you see from research to launch this product. So uh, we haven't yet run uh, user testing and launch. That's our new micro-credential offering this spring. So we're really happy to close that cycle. And we've been able to continue the instructor, same instructor from my through each of the micro-credentials with partnering with a different instructor that also offers expertise in those areas. Um, so that's been really exciting to build that. Um, and then we learned a lot in that first micro-credential that we developed. And um, we have made, developed many micro-credentials since, but this one I wanted to highlight because it was a really unique way of working with industry. It was navigating production with film and television industry in Ontario. And uh, this came about in a really interesting way. We had um, one of our faculty members who teaches in integrated media, she's teaching film production. And she said there, she was bringing uh, industry professionals to class at the end. There was a little bit of time in the curriculum for an alumni to come and say what their job is in the film industry. Um, and, uh, but there was not space in the undergraduate curriculum for a uh, devoted uh, like six week course to, to help people navigate that whole system and how to get that job and even what those jobs were. So um, that faculty member introduced me to other uh, people in the industry and we started talking about what we could do. Uh, so we came up with navigating production in television and film industry, uh, where it was for undergraduates who come from uh, film production schools, how to start working in the industry, but it was also for many different people. If you're coming from another country, you might have worked in film, but you have no connections with um, Ontario, the film industry here, you, uh, or if you're transitioning from a career and you just really want to start, but you don't know where and how, this is the course to take. It was uh, really interesting. It was a six week course. And uh, we had to figure out who the partners were uh, to work on this. And we really wanted this to be as open as we could be. Because, you know, as I began to do the research and learn more about the industry in my talking to the uh, subject matter experts, there are so many jobs. Like we, we were knowing that some of our, um, alumni were getting jobs in set construction and in camera operator, but there are so many, there's librarian, data analyst, accountant, uh, craft, all sorts of different jobs. And there's a huge demand. The other thing in talking to the industry partners is there is an equity uh, diversity issue in the industry. They are really looking to diversify their, uh, their employees and, um, people coming, they need to attract new people coming in. It just, it, it's essential. And also it's such a huge industry. They need more people. So I met with the Director of Deals of Canada initially. We had a relationship with them from before and they were really kind to make the connections with all the other unions that work in Ontario. So we worked with NABIT, Unifor, um, and we worked with IATSE, three different local unions, uh, 667, 411 and 873. And um, we, we learned something with the, uh, in, in our developing of micro-credentials that we really had to um, solidify that relationship in a way. Um, so uh, we had MOAs with each of those um, organizations that um, specified that they would provide academic oversight. Some of them said, I'd love to help, but I have so little time. Um, and we have so, so many different priorities. Uh, to support our um, our union members. And I said, that's fine, but if you can be involved in the communication and the development of the curriculum, that would be great. 
we ended up hiring, um, we posted within uh, university to hire uh, within our, you know, our, our human resource office, we posted the position and we contacted all the unions and said, please, if you have someone working in education, please ask them to apply. And we interviewed a lot of people and we were trying to hire one instructor for this position, but we ended up hiring two. One from local IAPT 667, which is the uh, Cinematographers Guild, and the other from Directors Guild of Canada. And they had both worked with ed education um, uh, programs within the, those um, unions. The other thing that I should say that we need to remember as, um, you know, as academics coming into this uh, kind of partnership agreement, many industries have been doing this for years on their own. They don't necessarily uh, need us. So we have to, or, th or think that they need us. So we have to sort of make that case and, and explain what we can offer and how we can even expand that, you know, outside of their organization and to, in this case, for outreach for new, new workers and to expand, um, the opportunities for people looking to work in film. So our team was, again, the project manager. Uh, we had an instructional designer. The project manager is me on <laughs> both of these cases. Uh, we had an instructional designer and a graphic designer and uh, two subject matter experts from two of the unions. And they spent a lot of time with each of the unions to um, work with what the details would be on the curriculum and how that was developed. And I'm just gonna quickly show, um, this is, you can see the module four and uh, you really get into what you expect on the set. I mean, there is uh, safety and awareness prevention, uh, very clear. There's a whole uh, discussion about sexual harassment um, and in the workplace. Uh, and it really goes into what all the jobs are. Students complete a quiz after each module to assess that they have learned what those jobs are, what the environment is, what to expect. And you can see this lecture here, um, you know, Yvonne is talking about how, you know, the call is at 4 a.m., uh, you know, uh, it couldn't go 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's quite a um, complicated, um, you know, kind of lifestyle, and there's, you know, preparing students for that lifestyle, what they would expect. Now, um, I think um, when we think about uh, how the, you know, how we've constructed this, uh, they do also come out with uh, an application, a CV and a package, how to start working in industry, uh, how to start getting that contract job, how to start getting their union card, and which union they want to approach and how that works. So that's uh, all that I have uh, in terms of the structures of how we, we partnered that. I can answer any questions. There was many years and many discussions that happened with both of these really terrific micro-credentials. Really grateful for the support. I should also mention the um, MCU uh, I, uh, provided the funding. This was part of the micro-credential challenge grant. So that was really exciting to have the seed funding to develop that, but um, happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Evan, for this presentation that has so far been so generous with practical tips. Uh, it's 9.33, uh, so I think we have a, some time for a couple of questions. Um, let's start with this one. Um, you, you touched on it a little bit, but maybe you can provide more detail. Uh, can you speak more to the blueprint for the assessment methods for some of the micro-credentials that you profiled? For example, maybe the empathy and social insight one. Um, and maybe as a follow-up, to what extent were industry partners involved? Sure. For empathy and social insight in our prototyping um, and ideation, uh, they do produce a process book. Um, so that is, and that's assessed through by the instructors um, that the assignments are assessed. There's uh, small assignments and also discussions. So there is um, a lot of engagement in those micro-credentials. So we are fortunate in these to in that in, in the both courses to have quite a limited class size with uh, quite a bit of instructor focus. So there's two instructors and we've had maybe, I think the class size has not been huge. It's under 20 for um, uh, about, about 20 for empathy and social insight. So they do come out with a process book that's assessed and um, they do have um, uh, quizzes and um, different kinds of step-by-step stacking uh, assessments as we go. Um, they, you know, it is more of an independent kind of micro-credential where it's their, them that are producing the, their own product and developing their own research. So um, Mayant has been involved in that 
curriculum development, what those assessment tools would look like, what a process book needs to be, um, what those knowledge quizzes need to be, what coming out of each of those. So it is, um, in that case, it's maybe not as direct related to working in at Mayan, but it is, they have provided the um, assessment criteria for what what students would need to take their product from research to launch. All right, uh, moving, we're getting the five minute warning, moving to the okay. next question. I wanna thank everyone for sending in your questions. I see that they're coming in now. Um, Hi, Evan. Uh, interesting to see the graphic designer involvement for the micro-credential development. Was this for marketing materials only, or was the graphic designer involved in design elements for the micro-credential itself? Oh, we were so fortunate. So actually, we had uh, we have a fantastic um, internal person, um, Lindsay Maynard, who does our, our graphic design and marketing materials. So she uh, spent time with the materials, uh, and we also had an illustrator that uh, illustrated especially one of the that normally we couldn't do uh, for micro credentials because of the funding uh, we were able to build that in so we had really quality visuals uh, for illustrations and uh, taking us through you know activating the LMS in ways we had the the videos had um, you know, we, of course, we had all the AODA compliance for the videos, but we also had graphic elements and um, animations and things like that. So that's where that came in. And the graphic designer is in-house. It's part of her job working with us. She um, really helped with that. And also our instructional designer. Uh, 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 so we had Lindsay Meaner as our graphic designer and uh, Anna Suzuki as the instructional designer, really looking at building all that integration in. So we were able to because of the grant, spend a lot more time on the resources. And then of course we had the, the uh, forward-facing marketing, which was all built on the, some of the materials and illustrations that we created for the content. Okay, uh, we have time for one more question. And this one has to do with uh, indicators of success. So how was success defined, and I would add measured for the, the film and production industry micro-credential? So this is a tricky thing, <laughs> and I think, and this is a conversation that I'm trying to have. Um, you, you know, I, I was discussing this at our deans and directors meeting um, uh, for KUs for the National Continuing Studies Organization in Canada. And um, you know, one of the problems is we don't have; they don't translate into full-time jobs. This isn't an industry where uh, students graduate from this micro-credential and then automatically have these nine to five full-time jobs. They have contract work. So, you know, we're assessing that on how prepared they are. We know that they're all prepared. We know they have a knowledge of the industry in a way they could never have had before, an insider knowledge. And they have these pathways. They have the package and they come out with a plan of how to acquire that job, how to start with those non-union contracts, then build into a union contract, which unions to approach, how to approach them, what is the right way to do it. There is also networking and that kind of thing all involved. So it's a little early to, to look at the, the data now of how many are fully working in the industry, but the, the goal is that they do get that, that contract. Um, but again, it's not it, it, for creative industries and for entrepreneurs, this is a little bit of a different um, case. And actually, in case I just we just received a research uh, grant to study the gig economy and look at the impact of creative professionals that are not in full time jobs but are still contributing so significantly to the economy in Ontario. All right, thank you, Evan. I know I said that last question was the last question, but I'm in a daring mood, and <laughs> we have a little bit under uh, two minutes, and I have a challenge for you. If you can answer this one in 45 seconds, just to make sure we get everyone, how do you differentiate a micro credential at OCAD? How do you differentiate a micro credential from a course? Uh, well, you know the uh, partner partnership makes a lot of sense the connection with industry the duration is different sometimes you know uh, sometimes it's shorter and also we look at what the focusing on certain skills so you know it's not a course about the entire film industry and film theory and film production this is really about how to get a job in the industry right so we did narrow the focus for that that uh, skills and that's kind of one of our definitions I mean you know um, 
that's a bit of a gray area, like, you know, a course and a micro credential, I don't necessarily think of them as differently. But I do think when you come out with a very specific uh, set of skills that may, and, you know, if you're doing a, a certificate, you know, the other thing we do is we have all of our micro credentials stack into our certificates. So if you want to get, uh, you know, um, film video production uh, certificate with us, my, uh, navigating the film industry in Ontario is one of them. So one of the stacking micro credentials. So we think of that as parts, but I agree courses, you know, we've been offering skill training since the beginning, since way before the word micro credential I heard about. But I do think that focus in on what those, what that specific thing is. And then the industry partner is also very key. Um, if it's an explicit partnership or if it's in, if you hire an instructor from that industry to really focus on aligning um, the output with the uh, the job or the uh, the, the nonlinear pathway to employment. All right, Evan, I, I want to say thank you so much for making the time in your busy schedule to share your experiences your, and your insights with our audience. It's just uh, one minute over 940. Uh, we'll wrap things up here. I will see everyone at the next uh, presentation. The next session is at 945, micro-credentialing for gap training. All right.